Hey everyone, let me throw a scenario at you. So let's suppose during our game, the hero encounters a battle and we want to select an enemy type from a pool of enemy types. And let's just go with some classic enemies like Bunders, Rasps, Cakes, and Torsons. So I could just roll a four-sided dice, right? So I could pick a random number between one and four, each representing one of my enemy types. But that would give them all an equal chance of being selected. And that's rarely what we want in a game. You know, for example, as we know, cakes are enormous and difficult enemies, which are quite rare. Whereas bunders are really common. You know, we've all got like five of them in our house at any one time. So say my desired outcome would be to get cakes only 1% of the time and bunders 50%. And let's say rasps 30% and torsen the other 19%. And I think this is how a lot of us often approach chance, and designers certainly, in terms of percentages which add up to 100. You might be tempted to cast a dice for each enemy. I could also just pick a random number between 1 and 100, and as long as their chances all added up to 100 as we did construct it, we can just see which section or segment it lands between. So if I roll a 1, I pick the Bunda. If I roll, let's say, Torsen, anywhere between 1 and 20, they will be selected. And this is probably the simplest way to do it. But the tricky part comes when I want to adjust these numbers. So say I want to take into account the fact that, as we know, cakes are a lot more common on blue moons. So during my game, if there's a blue moon, I want to bump their chance of appearing from 1% up to 40 how do I communicate or describe as a designer what happens to the other chances? All my numbers don't add up to 100 anymore, so I need to go ahead and change everyone's percentages, their chances, according to this new total. And this is really annoying to do repeatedly, not to mention just difficult to conceptualize, and it's probably going to come up a lot of times. I described something that was happening in the game, but it's far more likely that you're just going to change your mind about some of the numbers or add a whole different enemy. And it's very frustrating every time you would have to update these. So we are going to discard this concept of percentages and I'm going to show you two other implementations for solving this problem. So the first is what I'm going to call a ballot. And there are lots of iterations of this. There's lots of ways of understanding, picturing, creating this. It could be pieces of paper in a hat, an actual political election with votes, or colored pebbles in a bag, as you might remember from probability questions in school. So let's roll with that one because I like the visuals. So instead of percentages, let's imagine colored rocks in a bag. So literally, let's get an empty bag. Cake, let's say, is going to be the blue rocks. Since we were at 1%, we put one blue rock in. Our bunda gets 50 white rocks. Rasps, we add 30 red rocks. And torsens get 19 green. So I put all the rocks in the bag and then give it a little shake. And all I have to do to determine what enemy to get is to take out one of these rocks. Now, the great thing about this one is it doesn't actually need to add up to 100. We're just randomly picking out a rock in a bag. So it could add up to 20, it could add up to 20,000, doesn't matter. So if we change our minds about a certain candidate's chance, we want to give them more or less, we just have to take out or add the number of rocks they have. So in our code, we can think of this, the simplest iteration, as entries in an array. So literally, we can just construct an array and Every time we want to add a candidate, we just add their ID, which could be their object ID or an enum or a string or their name, whatever. However many votes or rocks they get is however many entries they will have in the array. Then we want to randomly pick an entry in our array. And we could do this by shuffling the array and then picking, well, it doesn't matter, the first entry, any entry. Or we could generate a random number between zero and the length of the array and pick that entry. So this is a really nice, simple, clean implementation, but there is a flaw that you will probably run into. We have to be using integers here because these are entries in an array. I can't have half an entry 
which means if I want to represent very small chances, say 0.001% that something happens, maybe a, a spawning a rare item or a really rare event in the game, I can't put 0.001 entries in an array. It has to be an integer. So that means that number has to be one, and I will probably have to scale all my other numbers up by thousands. And suddenly we are going to be creating a really big array with, you know, thousands of entries in it, which isn't great for memory. So while I think the array ballot is a really nice, simple solution, if you're going to be using numbers with large discrepancies like that, we might want to look at something else. So I'm going to call this second implementation a segmented ballot. So instead of rocks or votes, I want you to think of this one like a piece of string. Every time we add a candidate, we connect a segment of string where the length of that string represents their number of votes. At the end of that, we take our piece of string, we choose a random number between zero and the length of that string, and then we just check whose segment it has fallen between. That will be our winner. So in our code, this piece of string can actually just be a number. We can just call this our total. So all we have to do is we just keep a little tally of the candidate's votes, so the candidate's ID, and the length of the string or the number of votes that they've got in a little table or an array full of structs. And also every time we add that new candidate, we will be adding to our running total of votes. It's probably not necessary. We could just calculate that on the spot, but let's just keep a running total. When it comes time to select an enemy type or winner, all we have to do is select a random number between zero and our running total. Then we iterate over our tallies entries in a for loop and we are going to be keeping a cursor each time we iterate. So every time we iterate, we move our cursor up by the total number of votes, the length of the string or segment for that candidate. And then we just check if the random number we generated is between that cursor and this candidate's votes. And we actually just have to check if it's less than because we are iterating upwards. So if it is less than the cursor, that is our winning candidate. So this method is going to be using a lot less memory than constructing an enormous array. But as you can see, it, it's a teensy bit more involved, more computationally expensive a little bit, since we have to run this for loop every time we want to get an entry. Whereas with the array ballot, we're just, you know, accessing something from an array and generating a random number. Very easy and quick. I'd still recommend this segmented ballot in most cases, since in my experience, I often do want to be representing big discrepancies between chances. And honestly, the computational costs will be probably negligible. There is one more thing I want to keep in mind with this second method. Well, actually it does apply to all of them since it could be the number of votes, but while a piece of string, as we know, can theoretically be as long as infinity, our running total is an integer and it cannot be infinite. We will overflow at some point. So if the total number of votes is large enough. So if you have millions, billions of votes, there will be a cap. So if that does happen and you have a really big number of votes, you probably need to adjust this method, maybe split it over multiple numbers. But I truly doubt most people are going to run into this cap and it'd be more of an academic exercise to refine this further, which would no doubt be fun, but not for this video. So, there are a couple handy implementations for weighted chances. And there is more I would like to explore on this topic, particularly if we're dealing with successive polls of the ballot. So say we're populating the world with random objects, trees, rocks, and we want to weight which one is appearing, or perhaps we want to determine a random sequence of events, which say every event has to happen, but we don't want it to happen multiple times. In these cases, we might want to decrease the chance of a candidate after selecting one, or we might even want to entirely withdraw it from selection if we've already selected it once. So I might go over formalizing a lot of this into classes in another video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.